All right, let's move to the midterms and stick with the state of Georgia. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. I don't, who knows what this means, but it's interesting. Georgia breaks first day early voting record. They nearly doubled their figure from the last midterms. Now I have some updated numbers as of this morning because we're now, um, today is the fourth day of early in-person voting. So we have all the numbers through the first three days. And they've actually gotten even more stunning because it wasn't just the first day where you had this overwhelming flood of voters. Um, they have now, they are now outpacing the number of votes from the 2020 presidential election. So they're not only outpacing 2018, which of course is pre-pandemic and the pandemic has really shifted everybody's sort of like voting patterns and the way they vote and all of that stuff, but they even now are surpassing by quite a bit the 2020 presidential election. Here are the numbers. Um, as of uh, the end of Wednesday, over 291,700 people had voted. This is from ABC News. 268,050 of those were in person, about 24,000 of them were absentee. Back in 2020, the early vote numbers at that time were 266,000. So they're outpacing them by roughly 30,000 votes. I mean, that's really quite astonishing. Now, what does it mean? Who the hell oh, knows? No. Who knows, right? Um, you know, if you're inclined to be, a, you know, a Democratic, hopefully, you look at this and go, see, the young people are excited. They're turning out. Our base is showing up. I will say I looked at the demographic numbers. Um, black voters were accounting for a disproportionate number of Georgia's early voters. You actually had uh, black voters accounted for about 39 percent of the early voters. That's higher than their 29 percent of the overall, uh, you know, registration. That's one thing you could look at. Again, who knows what this ultimately means, except for the fact that people are clearly extremely engaged in this race and showing up in massive numbers. Yeah, I think that that is what my takeaway is. And look, having looked at the enthusiasm numbers and all that, I personally think a lot of that is GOP, but I could be totally wrong. Maybe there is the Dem Roe versus Wade bump. The They're Roe, 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 rowing Roe. their vote. What do you have? Row, row, their vote, Rovember. As some, man, I, I hate myself for even doing <laughs> any of these things. Anyway, our new team member, Mac, uh, put together a fantastic little uh, mashup of some focus group where they had, what was it, six Republicans, six Democrats, yeah, and one, one independent. independent. So these were all people who were Trump voters in 2016 right. and then flipped to Biden in 2020. So the idea is these are swing voters yes. because in those two presidential elections, they went Trump and then Biden. Right. And I think it's important to just listen to what they have to say about the midterms, about Dr. Oz, about John Fetterman and what we can learn from it. Let's take a listen. OK, so for the six of you, what words do you associate with them? Um, Oprah and pharmaceuticals. Oprah and pharmaceuticals? Yes. OK. Neither, neither of which I'm a fan of. OK. Stephanie? Celebrity. Celebrity. OK. Joshua? Um, like scam and lies. I always saw him pushing stuff. Okay, Casey. Uh, he, he lives. He doesn't live in quite in the state of Pennsylvania. What words do you associate with him? Fraud. Raise taxes. Okay. What else? Tax invasion. Tax evasion. Okay. Cannabis. Got it. Yolanda, what, what, what word comes to mind? I was going to say the same, cannabis and weed. Okay. Stephanie? Uh, not a specific word, but like a uh, phrase helping. He wants to help people get out of jail. Uh, I just, I'm not aware of Fetterman's stances on Roe v. Wade, so I don't feel like I can speak to it. So Stephanie, do you know where Fetterman stands on, on Roe v. Wade and abortion? Uh, not clearly, no. No? John, do you know where Fetterman stands on abortion? I do not. Yolanda, do you know where Fetterman stands on abortion? I'm not. How many of you would say that your decision to vote for either Fetterman or Oz will be driven, at least in part, by a concern for which party controls the U.S. Senate in 2023? By show fingers. So John, Brandon, Bob, okay, all of you except for Amy, so six of you. 
See, I thought one of the most noteworthy was that right there, which is that they were like, yeah, I think Oz is a fraud, but I care enough about the collection or the, you know, in, the importance of having a Senate majority that I'm willing to vote. Well, I have no idea if that's representative, well, right? Yeah, we don't right? know. I mean, focus groups, you have no idea. It's yeah. just always interesting to hear directly from voters how they're processing yes. the information. Ultimately, when they ask these people who, again, were Trump-Biden voters, who they would pick to vote for today, nine said they'd vote for Fetterman, two said they'd vote for Oz, and two said neither one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a couple things to me that are interesting about it. And just, again, a reminder of, like, we are in up to our eyeballs and details about these candidates and their policies and what's at stake and all of these things. You know, the issue that Democrats have been leaning into almost to the exclusion of everything else is abortion. Yeah. And they ask them, like, do you know his position on abortion? Nah. None of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. None of them knew. They were like, ah, who knows? And the apparently the issue that Fetterman was no, most known for was weed. Right. Which is also, you know, really interesting, especially since so many of them are now saying, you know, they're going to vote for him, apparently, uh, at least according to what they told this uh, this pollster here. The other thing you can see is, like, what is landing with them is more of the negative attacks from both sides. So mm -hmm. clearly they've uh, ingested the Fetterman message about Oz, scam, right. fraud, out of state, all yep. that stuff. And they also had clearly taken in some of the negative me me messaging from the Oz side about Fetterman. Um, the, I didn't, I was actually surprised the like tax fraud thing mm -hmm. was what apparently like stuck with them, which isn't even something we've really been, I don't even know the details of that, to be honest with you and yeah, what, there's been what that's all about. I, I followed it closely. I agree, again, you know, it didn't even necessarily surface it. It is interesting. I think it's just the feeling what people have when somebody appears a hypocrite, it's just digs so deep. That's one of those that people, drives people absolutely crazy. So, yeah, look, I mean, I thought it was a good representation. Yeah. They are not even motivated by the signature issue right. uh, from That's what telling, we saw in terms of why they even like Fetterman. They're like, yeah, he wants to help. I, what I think is important is, like, look, that's how most people think about politics. Like, I like that guy. I think he wants to help it's, it's a lot of vibes. Yeah, it's right. a lot of, you know, yeah, that's, that's why I thought Fetterman's attacks on Oz were so effective. Mm -hmm. Because this idea that he's, like, rich, out of touch— asshole, scam artist, you know, it, it lands with, like, it seems believable and it really landed with people. Um, and I think that's the only reason why he's had a shot in this race really at all, given the overall uh, numbers. And also interesting, I, did, I think maybe one of them uh, ultimately brought up, you know, his health and those concerns, but that clearly was not a major focus of their conversation either. They were more concerned about some other, like, personal characteristics that had been raised by Oz. So that was interesting. They also asked about the uh, governor's race in Pennsylvania, uh, the same group of voters, and the numbers were fairly similar. They had eight going for Shapiro, one for Mastriano, and four who were like, nah, we're out. Yeah. And one of them in particular, um, who I think was, you know, more sort of Republican leaning, said Mastriano was just too out there and he mm. just couldn't, just couldn't do it. Um, another trend that I think is uh, potentially noteworthy in terms of how we've seen these polls converge and Republicans really gaining a lot of ground as we come closer to Election Day. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen from Sean Trendy. This is going back to the Georgia race. He shared uh, Real Clear Politics polling average over the course of the Warnock Walker race. And what you see is when the uh, Walker scandals really started to hit, um, his numbers really dropped. But Warnock's numbers did not really rise, they sort of stayed more or less where they've been. Now, what a lot of people are reading into with that, and by the way, Walker's numbers have recovered somewhat, although he still remains behind by about two and a half points in the average of all the polls. Um, what a lot of people are saying is this is a dynamic of like, you know, people are not happy with these candidates, whether it's Oz or Walker or Blake Masters or whoever, like they're not in love with them, but they're basically not really willing to vote for Democrats. Yeah. So as the election day comes closer, they're more and more reconciling them to the fact of like, well, I'm not really a big Herschel Walker fan, but I guess I'm just gonna pull the, the lever for him. And there were a lot of comparisons to Trump after the like grab her by the P word mm -hmm. moment where, yeah, his numbers dropped, but Hillary's didn't rise and eventually people did find their way back to him. That's my takeaway. I just think things are so partisan right now. I think that the fundamentals are so strong in the GOP favor that people are just gonna come home. I could be completely wrong, I really could, but I just cannot get over, like, you got high inflation, you got high gas, there's a war going on in Europe. It just feels like there's chaos. Plus, 
the historical trend that the first the party in power always almost gets clobbered yeah. after their first midterms. Like yeah, but on the other hand, like I don't want to let the Democrats off the hook because you have um, eighty percent of voters saying that the economy, inflation, the economy, jobs, like you put the basket together, they're like, this is what we care about. Listen to us. Mm -hmm. This is the thing we care about. And by default, if you don't have any message about that, anything to offer them whatsoever, yeah, you're the party in power. You're going to get blamed for that situation. They have not focused at all on the economy. I can't tell you what they would do if they take power. Biden gave a big speech saying, okay, if we got, you know, 52 senators, then we'd codify Roe versus Wade. What are you going to do with 52 senators to help people's bottom line? And so I just find it so incredibly frustrating that they've decided to go all in on abortion and completely cede the ground of the economy to Republicans. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.